Welcome to episode number 18 of the Whitlings Prototype. <clears throat> so, yesterday I did not stream, but that's because I spent a solid hour just working through how I want paths to work. So I had a terrible, terrible... What would you call that? When... You have an epiphany. Yes, I had an epiphany. If I have a bunch of cubes, all with straight diagonal paths, um, <clears throat> there's going to be a massive amount of choices to make for our whittling. Um, and almost none of them are good. Um, this setup here also breaks our connect perpendicular paths logic, which is not good. So, I had to do some thinking, and I thunk, and I decided that this is going to be the basic path node layout of my any node that exits on a diagonal, exits on a corner. Excuse me. Now, this also adds an extra level of complexity, but I think this is a little bit more manageable. So, for instance, let me get my drawing tablet. <clears throat> if I have two paths, like so, then my whittling is going to walk up to this point. <clears throat> And he's going to see he's got two directions he can go. He can go this way, and he can go this way. And he'll make a choice. Um, as of right now, only these are connected. So once he goes over to the leaf node that sort of wraps the edge and connects the two faces, then he'll walk to the branching node, walk to the center, walk to this branching node, and then make another decision. So, this is where things get a little bit silly, and I kind of like it. I was trying to decide what, how could Whitlings decide whether to go left or right? <clears throat> how would they know? Because they're dumb inherently. In the lore, they are the stupidest creatures in the universe. So, I decided to implement some religion. That is right. So, this is a Zoolander reference. Derekian Whitlings can only turn right, and Hansalite Whitlings only turn left. And so maybe I'll have some sort of visual representation so that the players know what religious sect their dumb little Whitlings belong to. <clears throat> and I also thought it might add an extra bit of fun and difficulty if there were, um, you know, little temples on a cube. And if a Whitling walked past a temple, he would look at which religion that temple is following or dedicated to, and then he would just immediately switch to that religion. So this would allow players to be able to change what direction the Whitlings turn within the lore of the world and through the levels. So they wouldn't have to pick the Whitling and say, hey, you now can only turn right. Although that might also be a good design decision. We'll see when we get there. <clears throat> Still not sure about this part here. So if a Derekian finds a fork where only left is available, is he going to turn 270 degrees to the right? I think so. I think that would be funny. Because that's what Derek Zoolander had to do. I think I did. I've watched a few clips of that movie recently, and no matter what, he never, ever turns left, except for at the very end of the movie, when he reaches his hero's goal of looking pretty and turning left. <laughs> Such a classic movie. Um, this bit was a little bit um, ambitious, again, because if 
my witlings have built into their behavior what direction they're always going to turn, that allows me to add even more complex faces in here. Um, obviously, these three faces would not show up until later. Even the religious uh, sects wouldn't show up until much later in the game, once the player has mastered the basic um, spinning and turning of non-branching nodes. <clears throat> So, essentially, each path, well, let's say this, each face is a directed graph. And I'm still kind of struggling with the idea. So, let's see, from the Whitling's perspective, if he was entering on this side of the face, or this edge of the face, I'm wondering if I'm going to allow a, a Hanselite to see that there is a path directly to the left. I'm not sure about that. I'm kind of tempted to say that all Whitlings walk from edge to middle to edge. I don't know if they're smart enough just to turn right here. <clears throat> uh, one of my co-workers, I was explaining to him this directed graph here, and he described it as a, a Schrodinger's graph. Because depending on the observation of the graph, you have different choices, right? So if a Whitling is coming in from D, he would not have any branches. It would just go D, C, B, A, because he must go to the middle. But if a Whitling was observing from A to B to C, then he would observe a branch. He would consult his religious doctrine and decide to turn. <clears throat> there are also a couple of other edge cases, um, like what if... What if in this case, a Hanselite came here? Would the Hanselite be smart enough not to turn left? I think so. I, I, I do think, though, that the Hanselite would turn left 270 degrees. Or actually, that's less than 270. I think it's like 215. Um, and still continue on the only valid path. <clears throat> so religion <clears throat> doesn't make them even stupider, which is impressive, but it does inform their choices that they're going to make as they're walking through this world. Um, the other question becomes, what if a Whitling with no religious affiliation comes to a branch with two valid paths? And I think in that case, they would just die of confusion, you know? Um, <clears throat> and that's more of a design thing. We can play around with it when we get there. But the most important technical part is we need to break down how these path nodes are connected, how they work internally, and then how, when we rotate faces, they connect with each other. So let's see. I do believe we're going to want, well, here's the question. Do we actually want two different path node types? Um, I could even see having a third one where we have like a leaf node. And the leaf nodes are the ones that actually overlap with other edges and other leaf nodes on the cube. Um, our branch nodes could have multiple nexts or previouses. <clears throat> and then I guess just a basic path node would only be, let's change the color of this, maybe a pink is a leaf node. 
Now, I don't know what benefit we would get actually from separating these into different classes. One benefit I can foresee is there would be less, um, we'd be saving CPU time because we're not checking every node against every node. We're only checking the leaf nodes. Currently, we're doing that, but the reason that it works is because we're only looking at the last and first node. <clears throat> So instead of doing it through polymorphism, we're just doing it through understanding the structure of the face nodes. Hmm. <laughs> um, we're also going to have to get rid of our concept of indices. This is not right anymore. Because before, all of our path nodes were 100% linear. I do believe, however, that we're going to need some indication or some at least concept of is this leaf node a start leaf node or is it an end leaf node? I was talking with my peer again, and I was wondering if there's any better naming conventions when going with start and end, because these are paths that can be traversed in both directions. You know, the first one might be end to start, and that might be connected to a face that's rotated that makes you go start to end. So we're going to need to account for that in our logic. <clears throat> and actually, one thing I did... I haven't talked about git too much on the stream, but, oh no, not git GUI. Compress the database. I don't know about that. Oh, Jesus. Git bash. Um, so you can see here, I actually made a new branch for branching paths. <laughs> Bad joke. So my goal is to basically walk through and completely demolish the code, hoping that we can implement this feature in a somewhat saner way. And then once we have done that, we'll either merge back to master or if we fail, we can delete this branch and make a new branch and start again using what we learned from the last attempt. So let's see. Hmm, where to start? It's a question I find myself asking very often. And the answer for where to start is what can I test easily? And um, I guess I would say what part of the feature, because I want to break it down into smaller pieces. is most important. So you can sort of think of this as like prerequisites or dependencies. <clears throat> Which part of the feature do a lot of other things depend upon? And I guess the simplest test case would probably be our half curve, right? So we've got our start here, and we've got our half curve down, and this exits on a corner. And so with two diagonals here, Scale is not my strong suit. We should be able to, to test a couple of things. 
Um, the first thing is path choice. And the next thing would be <clears throat> our, I guess we could say dynamic graph linkage. Just a fancy way of saying, hey, um, when I spin the cube, what faces are they connected to now? <clears throat> and honestly, I'm thinking of completely getting rid of on trigger enter. I don't know if I should. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get rid of on trigger enter just for the fact. So if we think about a side view here, and if these are our two nodes, our two leaf nodes, you know, one cube is sort of like this, <clears throat> and the on trigger enter happens. something like this. And I would rather just, when the cube is done spinning, find all the cubes around it and check for overlaps. So let's see. Let's, let's document that out. So when it completes a rotation, and what's interesting is I do believe that we set it up a while ago so that when we begin a spin, we spin at the 90 degrees, we decide which faces are going to be turned off, and then when the rotate is complete, then we turn off those faces. Hmm, that's worth investigating. Um, I think it might be in the cube rotator. So begin, rotate, start rotation, target rotation. Thunderbutt, hey, 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 Thunderbutt. <sighs> Hopefully you can't hear her cleaning herself. I really hope that is the case. <clears throat> so, let's do a shift F12 and find out where we handle rotate complete. Hide inactive faces, validate all path nodes, okay. So when we calculate the hidden faces, okay, so we set this as active to false immediately. That's what I was wondering about. Good, good, good. So yeah, as soon as we begin rotating, we've already nixed out all of the faces that might be, that will be hidden by adjacent cubes. So where were we? When cube completes rotation, we want to check each face's leaf nodes. I'm going to call them leaf nodes in the documentation, or at least in my notes. And I don't know if I'm actually going to make that distinction in the code itself. Check each face's leaf nodes. For overlap of adjacent cube 
base nodes. And let's let some um, this adjacent here. This is pretty important because with corners, and we talked about this last time with this crazy, um, this terrible three-dimensional point cloud that I made. Let's see if we can. So here's an example. And you'll like, oh, actually, yeah, I think right now our guy is following this path. But, oh, that's right. Yep, I need to spin this. But you can actually see visually, this makes a lot more sense for him to walk to this point. Instead of walking to like the very corner, that's a little bit goofy. But he is able to follow this path, which is pretty nice. So most of our logic is good. We just need to start modifying the path node setup. So. Let's see, this one facing towards me is back. Let's unset this uh, up. Let's do a half curve down pool. And for this uh, back, we'll unset it right, unset, and up. Uh, let's not do a straight. Let's do a single. I think this is going to be half curve down, rotated 90. Yeah, there we go. So our little guy should walk to here, to here, and then continue following. I'm definitely glad I made a branch for this because we are going to start breaking stuff. Um, let's clean the heck out of our hierarchy. We don't need a lot of this stuff. We'll name these more appropriately. Okay, so resources, path, test, faces, and oh, this is smart. We only have one face to test now, and that is half curve down. So let's see how far in on this node. So, I'm just going to name this branch node. And I kind of want to go into this exact line. I want to straddle this line. So, I know that my path width is 0.34, and we're kind of sticking with that as a hard coded number for now. So, let's just try half of that. <clears throat> so, 0 0.05 minus 0.17 is. 0.33, negative 0.33. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. What is this, negative 0.5? Oh, negative 0.33? It's not quite what I was hoping for. Okay, let's see, so, uh, 
I've got this shape, and I know that this is 0.34 units, and I know that this is 90 degrees, which means that both of these are 45. I'm almost positive that's wrong. I'm pretty much just making this up as I go along. That is my guess. <laughs> Let's see how it comes out. The worst calculator on the planet. So I want cosine of 45 times point... Oh my god, you're the worst calculator. Point two four. That seems extremely wrong. Let's give it a shot. So that means this is point two six. This is negative point two six. Well, that did give me. Sort of the opposite square here. But I want something that is halfway in between. So if I know that these are 0.24, let's zoom in a little. We'll do part two of our masterful math. <laughs> so now we know that this is point one seven. And so I think we would still want, we want to know what this is. Oh, this would have to be 0.17. I dumb. That's what I tried. Still doesn't look right to me. Whatever, it's a prototype. <clears throat> Feel bad every time I say that. No, this is point four. Um. Hey, Thunderbutt, hey, um, um, I'm teaching here. What are you doing? Oh, point five. 
and then this would be 0.37, negative 0.5. Sure. Good enough for me. <clears throat> so we've got these faces. We've got these nodes. I'm not sure if I want to go and just delete everything in path. That seems like a good choice. Halfway done. So let's go to path node. So let's just start throwing exceptions here. We'll probably come undo a lot of this um, wake. Let's just comment that out. I'll comment out this too. I don't really want to be throwing exceptions on hooks that I have no control over, remove invalid path nodes. I'm assuming that all of this code is going to get thrown away. Okay. I think we could benefit from some naming conventions. Let's call this start leaf node. And we'll call this center node. And then there are two end leaf nodes. That point three seven is really bothering me. <laughs> oh, I've got to, I've done something terribly wrong. Wait a minute. Maybe not. If this is point two four, then twelve point one two is going to be halfway in between. So these could be point three eight. And my life would be would make more sense. Yay! <laughs> no real visible difference, but my math works out now. So I feel a lot better. Maybe it was the magic of Thunderbutt. Maybe it was hard work and persistence. Maybe it was those vaccines I was given as a child. Nobody will ever know. But I solved my problem. Let's move on to the next one. Let's see. What do I need in a path node? Let's let's region this out. Region old node. So I believe that each path node is actually going to need a list of next and previous.
You know what? I think we are going to want to inherit from Path Node. Yes, yes, I think that's the plan. <clears throat> so what we can do... Let's create a directory for this pathing. Oh boy, what would we call this? Branch node. And inheritance in Unity is terrible. It is really, really bad. So let's get rid of these things. I only care about our pathing stuff right meow. So one of the first things that we have to remember when dealing with inheritance and polymorphism in Unity is that these functions are not virtual by default. In fact, if you try to make these functions virtual, I have heard bad stories of it not actually working like you thought it would. So... Let's make a new protected functions, protected methods section. Virtual returns nothing. My awake. And so by calling my awake in the base class, <clears throat> we can allow C sharps um, polymorphism and inheritance to take over, sort of abstracting it away from the mono behavior badness that we usually have to deal with. But I do believe that this seems like a good idea. This code is probably not going to change. Our path node will still probably want to know about the bounds. Our branch path node will inherit from path node. And these are protected. And this is a protected override. I do want to call base awake, and then we can do whatever we want here. So let's see. Sorry, Thunderbutt. So it's still kind of tricky because our path nodes actually, they might branch one way, but not the other way. In fact, they will only branch one way. Hmm. So if we are traveling this way, there is no branch. And that's really goofy because I was hoping that this is going to need to be a branch node, right? Mm hmm 
So maybe what we can do is we can have a branch direction. And if the branch direction is the same direction that the whittling is traveling on this particular face, then do some branch logic. Bool. Maybe not a bool. Well, you can only travel two ways. Is uh, traversing. No. Let's do an enum. Say that so de so defeatedly. Um, this might need to be public. Public enum direction. Direction, uh, dir. No, let's give it a better name. Branch direction. <clears throat> Ooh. Maybe this is better as traverse direction. And I like this as branch direction too. Okay. Naming things is hard. And so let's make a note here. This will work for everything except the cross face which has three branches. Oh my god, that's terrible. So we hit the branch node that would be in the center. And this would actually have a branch path node from every direction, wouldn't it? This is a very special case. I don't even know if I want it. So we're going to ignore it for now. And our branch node will just have two links to either the right or the left. And both of these will need to be serialized. Serialize field. So let's see what this looks like. My branch node actually has a branch node. So if this is start and these are end, then our branch direction is forward. And if I'm looking this way, Let's actually name these. This would be left end leaf node and right end leaf node. So let's see. 
we're not going to be using index anymore. That is right out. We're going to pre-link all of these bad boys. So our path node is going to have a next and a previous. And you know what? Let's um, let's throw in a I think it's a label note. Um, Space twenty. Ah, header. Old. Old. <laughs> sure, that's enough for me. <laughs> there we go. So now I can visually divide. These are the things that I care about now. So let's see if this is end. Then previous is the branch node. Previous is the branch node of our left end. So going forward, we've got a left and right. But previous to this branch node is the center node. So there is no next, because we've got that branch in that direction. Center node previous is start, and next is branch. Okay. Um. So I feel like we've linked up this face enough to kind of test it out. Let's apply the prefab changes. This is a half curve down path face. Right, 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 explosions everywhere. Ooh. <laughs> That's, that is an interesting thing. Um, I modified the prefab, but I don't have the internal hooks linked up. So when that prefab is modified, it also updates all of my cubes. So that's a very, very important thing to think about. Easiest way to test, easiest way to test. Who called that? Cube face 72. Boy, this is gutting a lot of code. But that's fine. Because a lot's going to have to change, right? Cube face, cube face, cube face. Almost all from the same spot. Cube core, 187. Find connecting path nodes on cube. You know.
Yep, this is all. I am going to want to call this eventually. But it's an interesting issue because now we just don't have a first and a last. In theory, a cube could have two leaf nodes, or if it's a diagonal 45 degree, we could have four leaf nodes. And we're going to have to check each one of those leaf nodes against all the possible faces that could be connected. Who's calling overlap node? Cube core 130. What is this? Find possible path nodes. Oh, this is our our beautiful... Is this the quintuple? Oh, this is the one that would need to be a quintuple um, loop. It, oh, come on. There we go. Can't I? Cool. No explosions. That's what I like to see. So I think this is a good place to stop for today. We have started the massive rework. We've updated one cube face, found the appropriate maths to use. We're not getting any runtime errors, so we have sort of a clean slate to attack this problem from a new direction? I don't know. It's probably going to be a very similar looking direction. It's just that we've got some extra moving parts to take care of and sort of nail down, make sure that nothing's wiggling in our logic. So I think that's it for today. Maybe later tonight, uh, depending on how how long work is, I might be able to post one more video. But I think the plan for next time is the initial path node connection. So kind of like what we did last uh, last time, where once the cubes spawn at the appropriate time, we're going to search for all of the leaf nodes that connect with each other. So that's it for me. My name is Billy Graben. I hope you learned a little bit, and I will see you all at some time in the future. At the very least, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.